this series of videos, we spend 61 days overlanding through Namibia, Zambia, Zimbabwe and Botswana. Following our visit to Kasanka National Park, we entered North Luangwa National Park from the northwest at Manu Gate. North Luangwa's anti-poaching efforts were next level. On entering the park, you are issued with a tracking device which you have to keep with you at all times. There are a number of internal checkpoints and in the so-called core protection area between the checkpoints at Nukuwele and Mwanya, Self-drive tourists are not allowed to deviate from the main road. Our understanding is that the reason for these exceptional measures is an active rhino breeding program in the core protection area. We did not see much in the core protection area, but then we did pass through during the heat of the day when animals are less active. It was clear that elephants had been feeding in the area, and we did see a few. Outside the core protection area, we found the game to be quite skittish. North Luhangwa is known for its Cookson's wildebeest and Crawshay zebra, but they were so difficult to photograph that we only got decent shots of them in South Luhangwa. Our first night we stayed at Mushika campsite on the banks of the Luangwa River. This campsite has a nice view of the river where you can spot game coming to drink. The campsite features a long drop or pit toilet with a hand pump for water but no other facilities. You get the whole campsite for yourself so it is nicely secluded. An illustration of the usefulness of a front camera. Here we have to go through a ditch but we can't see over the bonnet of the vehicle. So now I'll switch on the front camera and suddenly it's actually quite easy to see where the road goes. The second night we stayed at Muzungwe campsite. It has the same facilities as Mushika and is possibly even more secluded, but we preferred Mushika as it offered a better view. These were the only campsites on the whole trip that did not have shower enclosures, so our folding canvas bucket shower saw little use. And just as we thought we were not going to see any predators in North Luangwa, we came across these lions which had just caught a baby hippo. It was already very hot, as you can see from the panting lionesses. was in no mood to share, but the two youngsters simply persisted, inching closer, then starting to lick the prey, and then feeding. Yeah. 
After about an hour another vehicle arrived and we left to give them the opportunity to have a good view. On the way out, we had to make use of the pontoon crossing over the Luangwa River. It was Alta's turn to drive, and she found it a bit stressful with very narrow clearances. Once the vehicle is on, the pontoon operator drags the pontoon across by hand. There really was no space to spare on the pontoon. Both sets of ramps were resting against the vehicle. I don't know what someone with a larger vehicle would have done. The wobbliness of the pontoon as a vehicle is driven on or off is a bit unnerving. But we got off safely and started on our way to South Luanda National Park. This is the route between North Luangwa and South Luangwa National Parks. On the way we passed through Luhambe National Park and decided to press on to the Zikomu camp in the Nsefu sector of South Luangwa National Park. We suffered a side wheel puncture and had to use one of our spare wheels. At Zikomu camp we had many visitors to our campsite. Zikomo is nice enough, but the stands are quite small 
and it was the most expensive campsite we stayed at in all of Zambia. Altar with a sausage from the sausage tree. Safety tip, don't camp under a sausage tree. Those sausages are heavy and will knock you out if they fall on you. That night we found out that hippos love the fruit of the sausage tree when we were woken by a hippo happily munching on the sausage that Alta earlier posed with. Thornycroft giraffe are a subspecies of the normal giraffe and only occur in the Luangwa Valley. Their coat pattern is the most obvious difference from the South African giraffe. It is believed there are only about 550 Thornycroft giraffe in existence. We then came across a few lions doing what they do best. Crawshay zebra are a subspecies of the plains zebra. They look a bit like a cross between a plain zebra and a mountain zebra, with narrower, darker stripes, no shadow stripes, and distinct striping on the legs like a mountain zebra. But the striping extends across the belly like that of other plains zebras. From Zikomo, we relocated to Track and Trail campsite. Track and trail campsite at South Luangwa, surrounded by a low electric fence to keep out the hippos. Shade shelters, standpipes, dry places, and quite decent ablutions. We were the only people in the campsite. Track and trail is conveniently close to the park gate. The staff were very friendly. Campers are welcome to use all lodge facilities and we really enjoyed our time there. At track and trail we went on the sunset drive to be able to see the park after hours as it were. During this drive we saw some lions who were not yet active as well as a female leopard with her sub-adult cub. It seems the flies bother them as well. After dark, we saw a scrub here Scops owls, some genets, and a young spotted hyena. The next day we saw an adult being bothered by the flies. We also met up with the same leopards we saw the previous night. The mother had a fresh impala kill 
but was being mobbed by all the game viewers and got separated from her cub. Eventually, she reached the kill again, but the cub was still absent. While she was eating, an elephant sauntered past. She then went for a rest. We departed from South Luangwa to cross into Zimbabwe at Kariba, but as this is quite a long way, we had an overnight stop near the Luangwa Bridge. There are many police checkpoints in Zambia, sometimes used for advertising. We made the mistake of passing through downtown Lusaka. Traffic here is horrendous, so try to plan your route to miss it. We decided to use the border crossing at the Kariba Dam Wall and overnighted on the Zambian side at Eagle's Nest on the shores of Lake Kariba. The access road to Eagle's Nest is not all that scenic, but once you're inside, it is very nice. Eagle's Bay Resort, camping on grass, very nice view over the Kariba Lake and the resort also has a beach featuring a beach bar. There was a water problem at the Camp Ablutions, but they unlocked one of the chalets for us to use its bathroom. The border crossing at Kariba the next day was very smooth and quick probably the quickest one of our entire trip. In the next episode, we visit the iconic Mana Pools in Zimbabwe. Thanks for watching. <laughs>